Levi Trumbull reporting here in Boonesboro, Maryland. We're here today to sit down with the individual who first broke his silence to raise allegations of what he claims are discriminatory practices at Dan's Restaurant and Tap House. His name is Melvin Hall, and little has been reported about his allegations since the time that they were filed last February of 2022. And while at this point many of us are familiar with the allegations presented by Neil Glessner, Mr. Hall's allegations have largely gone unnoticed. However, that ends today. We sat down with Melvin Hall in depth, and our conversation with Melvin will be used as part of an upcoming documentary about Dan's Tap House that is currently in the works. But for today, and in this moment, this is Melvin's story. Thank you very much for taking your time to uh, be here today and talk with us about your incident. So welcome. Appreciate it. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about where you're from and a little bit about your background. Well, I'm from Silver Spring, Maryland, well, Montgomery County, Maryland, for real. But uh, I'm one of seven, you know, brothers and sisters and my mom and dad. Everybody know that, but mm -hmm. uh, I've been living in Sharpsburg for almost 15 years now. I think a good place to start would be talking about how it is that you had the opportunity to work at Dan's Restaurant and Tap House. How did that first come to your attention? It came to my attention because I once worked inside a family business that burnt down and I couldn't have nowhere else to work, so mm -hmm. I chose, that was my second opportunity to go to work at, so I chose that one. That was actually my first. No, that's my second job that gave me pay stubs. So who was it specifically that hired you? Mm -hmm. Brandon, the hiring manager over at Dance Tap House was the one that hired me. Let's start with um, your complaint now. In the complaint that you filed, one of the first things that you mentioned is that you were supposed to receive compensation in the form of $12 an hour, but that's not what you received, you stated, you said something in the effect of well, $11 was, an hour. Tell me about that. Yeah, they told me that I was supposed to be starting at 12. He said he was going to talk to my, he said yes, I'm going to talk to my manager about it. So I thought I was going to work at 12, but like they started me at 11. What specifically was your job duty? What were you hired to do? I was specifically hired to be as a fry grease cook. Mm. Was that your yeah. title? Yeah, as okay. a fryer, yeah. In the complaint, it goes on to state that there became a time when you started to uh, get verbally harassed, racial incidents, taunted, things of that nature. Uh, yeah. When, t tell me a little bit about that, and when do you claim is the first time that that type of activity had started? The first time the incident started is when I came back from Bayview, in Bal from Baltimore Bayview, and it was approximately like, I think it was like at nighttime, like eight or nine at night. They come past the window and scream the N-word and keep going. Like, and I heard, like, I know by the sound of their voices, I know it was one of their customers from one of the, my coworkers. So you have alleged that your coworkers at Dan's restaurant, they would torturously interfere with the duties of your job. Yeah. How would they do that? How would they interfere with you? Like they would purposely cut off the panini press so like my orders would take longer to uh, go out to my customers or they would hide the work slip and get their work done, like, and then start hanging up their work slips, like, as if, like, oh, they said, Melvin, you forgot this. I wouldn't have forgot if you would have, like, hung it up and presented it to, to my face, you know, mm -hmm. as a normal sheet was. You also make a mention to the fact that some of the coworkers would turn off the grease fryers in the kitchen. Yes. Tell me about that. They would turn it off the grease, and it, it would just take a long time to warm up for my food to get out. So I have to wait on the side for it to warm up for, in order to, for the customers to get their food. Mm -hmm. So I and had you, a hard time. You claim this was all intentional. They were intentional. Yes, I approached them about yeah. it. And well, I, I told the hiring manager what they were doing. And he told them he'll speak to them, but it still wasn't, no, nothing was done. Moving on in your complaint, uh, you allege an incident. I believe it was November 11th, 2019 in which you claim that you sustained a physical injury while you were on the job. Yes. Tell me about that injury. Well, I was uh, cleaning around the grease. I was saying uh, my hand fell into the grease as I was cleaning and basically... So this deals with the... A grease fryer, the oil. They said I had to clean around the grease before I leave, so I cleaned around the grease and my hand falls in. Mm -hmm. So I'm like... Your hand physically went into the yes. hot 
Grease. Yes. Inside. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm, I've been hearing that they say that I purposely put my hand in to the grease to receive work was comp, which was not true as well. So. Hmm. They yeah, made have, that allegation. That yeah, we've been having discrepancies around that. Yeah. Put they, your hand in a grease fryer. Yeah, that's what I. And what do you say to that? I find that just not only disrespectful, but it's also like another cover up. It's not really, logical. Like, that's not even logical to do something like that. Like, what type of person would physically mm -hmm. stick their hands in the Unless you're insane. And then you talk about in the complaint that after you had injured this hand, as this was happening, your coworkers advised you that you needed to clock out. Correct. You clocked out. And then they had, would be unwilling to provide medical assistance from that point on. Correctly, they refused to call the ambulance and. They, but they told you to clock out. Yes. And you they told did me that. To clock out, and that's the only thing I did. And then mm -hmm. next thing you know, I asked for the ambulance. They would not call the ambulance, and. Did you call you an ambulance? No, I had to just drive with my hand, right hand. hand did they do to, anything? What, what they just? They just put, totally blew you off. I'm not sure what that is. But I mean, they didn't. They didn't call you an ambulance. They didn't call police. Nothing. They didn't call fire. They didn't, you know, take you to the hospital. They didn't, call, they didn't bring they, in an they emergency. Didn't call, no, you know? they didn't even call my emergency contact number that I right. had. Right. I was about to say that an emergency contact yeah, number. Yeah, they didn't even call that. I had mm -hmm. to call. I had to drive all the way to the hospital. They had to put me to sleep. That's you, how much pain I was in. Really? Yeah, they put me to sleep. And you, assumably, you did so with one hand. Yeah, I had. I ran every red light mm -hmm. until I got to the hospital, mm -hmm. and they had to put me to sleep. What is the end result of that injury. Is there anything permanent? Yeah, but I'm Where currently we at? now now nine fingers, you know, permanent damage. I you got lost a finger? Yes. Well, which finger is that? My, my all, all yeah, motor my, function. No, my, yes, my right dominant hand. I okay. lost my movement and I can, if, if I was to grab something, it would be mm -hmm. on for a couple of minutes and it just releases by itself, it'll drop. So this is my new dominant hand. So one of your fingers as a result of this incident is essentially a vegetable? Correctly. Okay. It, don't, it don't go above surface anymore. It's mm -hmm. done. One of the more striking claims in the lawsuit that you have against Dan, you make the allegations that they have stalked you, harassed you, taunted you, racially mocked you, and they have done this at new places of employment, but also online as well. Yes. How, how have they done that, and what are some of the instances of that I occurring? Had to, I had to quit a total of two jobs because of the stalking and harassment. Mm -hmm. uh, Trent Cousins came to my job like the first job he went to, he, that's he been stalking me and harassing me through traffic. I'm not sure what his problem is. Of he's trying to get information to bring back to dance, but I do have him, you know, harass me all the way from West Virginia back to the tap house. I would like to show you a photograph that you have previously provided me. Uh, this is what has been described as a photo of a tortilla wrap, Ku Klux Klan hood that you claim an employee sent to you uh, in February of 2021. Uh, notably, that would be Black History Month. So I'm gonna hand you this photograph right here, and I would like you to describe to me what it is we are seeing in that image. Well, what I can, what I, my perspective of what I'm seeing is a Ku Klux Klan. Right. A Ku Klux Klan, you know, replica, a fake version of Ku Klux Klan. That's what I can see in my picture. Like, at the end of the, at the end of the day, and it had Black History Month on the bottom, so it has significance of. You, you think know, you can put the two and two together? Yeah, that this. Is, I think the the world can put two and two together. Is right. What this is like? Right. It's not. You think at face value? Yeah. It explain. It's yeah, self-explanatory. If you could, yes. If you put, yeah. It's like putting two and two together and getting four. We know what your attention was. And that image that I just handed you, that was sent directly to you? From the Snapchat as yeah. well, yes. How does it make you feel to look at an image like that that's being sent to you knowing that this is coming from employees at Dan's restaurant and it's coming from a place in which you work, a very building in which you work? How does that I mean, from, make you feel? From, from start, from day one, from getting hired on till now, I would never expect it out of them. Like I would have thought that they were good, nice, good people, but like working on the inside and going through some of the motions, it was completely disgusting. Mm -hmm. It made me mad and enraged because like I just thought like them times was over, mm -hmm. and like me seeing that image it just grew a whole fount of like anger in me, like and like it just struck a whole. It struck a chord, and like I didn't. If I feared for my life, I didn't. I, I didn't know if they were going to like 
what they're going to think, like what they thought of me at that after I seen that picture. I didn't, I didn't know I was, I don't know if my name was Melvin anymore. It's just I was frightened for my life after that seeing that picture. How is it you think that Dan's Restaurant can hold themselves out as advocates for the Black Lives Matter movement, but yet at the same time house employees that distribute images such as the one that we're discussing in this moment? Yeah, basically they're being hypocrites of what they're saying. Like one minute they say they support Black Lives, like the Black Lives, another minute they're putting up these racial symbols up. So were the managers or any of the upper level staff at Dan's restaurant, were at any point, did they know about what was going on with you? And did any of them ever attempt to intervene? Well, Dan, he knew the manager, the owner of the did building. You, did knew. you bring it to his attention? Yeah, I brought it to his attention. The mm -hmm. first thing he tells me, there's nothing I could do for you, as if like. When you brought this to Daniel Often Brink, is that the gentleman you brought it to? Yes. And you described what you were going through. And he just. What did he say to you? He just brushed it off and said, there's nothing I can do for you, pal. I was like, really? Like, that was his word. Word for word, he said, there's nothing I can do for you, pal. Well, and what and was, was it? He said, there's nothing we can do for you, pal. Nothing I can do for you, pal. Okay. And I was like, you're the, my, back in my head, like, you're the manager. What, who else can I come to with this situation going down? Like, do I, like... So if you would briefly describe what all of this in which you allege has done to your mental welfare and just your overall well-being as a human, what has it done to you? I feel like I gotta be watchful and alert every single day now. Mm -hmm. Like, I never felt that way in my life, but like, I feel like I gotta be more alert than I usually have to be because of this incident. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. So your anxieties have heightened, is that? Yeah, mm -hmm. real, my anxiety but got real bad since the incident and like, I felt abandoned by my own friends, well, so-called friends. So-called friends, your yeah. people that you work with. Yeah. Did you feel like anyone had your back? No, every the person restaurant? I turned to, was basically a part of the, like, either doing it to me or, like, just brushing it off knowing that it was happening to me. And I was like, that's not what friends do. What do you think of the fact that since you filed this lawsuit in February of 2022, that since that time, there have been other people in the community who have also made discriminatory allegations against Dan's restaurant and Tap House, that other people have come forward and I just made those similar accusations of their own. I just feel like it, there, it's just continue to prove my point of what I've been through. Like, they've been doing people wrong for so many years that they got comfortable with doing it. So now that is another person that's, that's found a lawsuit like I did, yeah. people are starting to become aware of like, okay, it's not, he's not crazy, he's, he actually knows. I'm just letting everything let's just fall and let the truth come to the light because People need to see what's been going on behind the scenes. So you, you ultimately think it reiterates your point and what? Yeah, it just, goes, it just goes back to my points I've been stating. So what is your message to the owners and the employees at Dan's Restaurant and Tap House? If you could say anything to them about this situation, what would you want to share with them? I always tell them straight up, like, do the right thing. Like, you know what you guys did, you know what you guys been doing. Do the right thing. It's about, I mean, it's about that time. Like, y'all been lying and lying and lying, and why not just tell the truth for once? And what would you say to your community, the Boonesboro community that has seen all this unfold? What is your message to your neighbors? My, my message to my neighbors is, if you see something going on, say something. Don't just be just going to the sideline, because not doing nothing is doing something. That's all I have to say. All right, and well said. Melvin, thank you very much. I appreciate you taking your time to have this uh, in a conversation with me. You're welcome. And uh, we will see what comes next. Thank you, Levi. I appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you.